Depression is most common mental health disorder in the United States, so much that 37% of college students face depression. It's scary because a lot of people don't really know when they have depression or if other people have depression. So it's really important to bring awareness to the situation and educate yourselves in it. So myself, Maddie, Allison Gibbler, and Pam are here to educate you and to help cope with depression. Depression is defined as a mental health disorder characterized by persistently depressed mood or loss of interest in activities, causing significant impairment in daily life. Recent studies have shown a combination of biological, psychological, and social sources of distress. Research also suggests that these factors may cause changes in brain function, including altered activity of certain neural circuits in the brain. Two of the most common Sources of depression is major depression and um, persistent depressive disorder. So major depression is having symptoms of depression most of the day, nearly every day for at least two weeks that interfere with the ability to work, sleep, study, eat, and enjoy life. An episode can occur only once in a person's lifetime, but more often a person has several episodes. And then persistent depressive is having symptoms of depression that last for at least two years a person diagnosed with this form of depression may have episodes of major depression along with periods of less severe symptoms. Some other ones that you may have heard of is seasonal depression. That's usually a kind of depression that happens every time, the same time every year. So like, for example, a lot of people get it during the winter times when it's cold, you can't go outside, there's not as much to do, you feel lonely. Um, another one, situational. This one's known as an adjustment disorder. So in stressful situations, a lot of people will have extreme mood swings. So that will be known as situational. Bipolar disorder has manic depression in it, which is like extreme mood swings. And then postpartum, which we will explain more in detail later, but it's basically just depression after childbirth from others. So to the right, this is kind of a chart to show some of the incidents in the US. It goes based off of sex, age, and race. So you can look at that as you please. Um, as we said earlier, it's one of the most common mental disorders in the United States. 17.3 million people um, have depression, which would be 7.1% of all US adults. Um, there's a higher incidence in women, which we'll also explain a little bit later as to some of the reasons for that which would be 8.7% and then 53 in men. The effects more adults identifying with two or more races. And this goes for major depression. So as I said earlier, there's more of an incidence for women to have depression. And this has to do with menstrual cycles, hormones, postpartum, pregnancy and fertility, and some physiological responses to stress. Also, women have a really hard time coping with body image, so that takes a big impact on their mental health as well. But basically, it has to do a lot with hormones for women and their mental thought on their body image. Um, along with women having depression, postpartum depression is one of the most common, common, most common complications of childbirth for women. Um, approximately 600,000 women get PPD, known as postpartum depression. Um, postpartum depression, a little bit more about it. It's what I said, depression after childbirth. Um, that's because they have a combination of hormonal and psychological adjustments of motherhood. So that gives them um, a risk factor of having postpartum depression. Some other risk factors they may have is family history, stressful life events, stress-related pregnancies, substance abuse, twins or multiple births, challenges with breastfeeding, 
Um, some treatments to go with it is cognitive behavioral or interpersonal therapies and some antidepressants. And something to keep in mind is that about half the women who are diagnosed with PPD experience symptoms during pregnancy and that they are more likely to get major depression later in life with having postpartum depression. So that's something to keep in mind with women during pregnancy. Um, this is where I come in. Um, my name is Allie. Um, so COVID, as we all know, has made a huge impact on all of our lives. Um, I feel as though we have heard the word unprecedented a lot more than ever before. I'm not sure before March of this year, I've heard that word before in my entire life. Um, so COVID has greatly impacted our mental health. Um, so COVID has greatly impacted the things that we can and can't do like we normally could before. It has um, for sure impacted our the way that we gather. Um, for instance, with the holidays being right around the corner and with um, Thanksgiving have just happened before, um, before now, um, families, either they did gather in small groups or they may have not um, adhered to the guidelines that were um, suggested or maybe they didn't gather at all maybe based on what they um what they felt was uh sorry what they felt was best for their situation depending on what they wanted to do um just based on what their situation was um sorry it's hard my grandfather just passed away um actually from covid so we didn't get together based on what our family felt was best because of trying to maintain our distance from relatives um, so I have had a huge, um, impact from COVID. So that has something that's been, been, um, really hard on my family's life right now. And it has definitely been a huge thing that has impacted my mental health, um, greatly and, um, for sure has changed the way that I view COVID and has made it a lot more of a serious thing on my life, um, I also do work in a nursing home as well. So I do see on that end as well, how well my um, residents haven't seen their family since March. I see that they aren't able to see their families and how they haven't been able to see their loved ones, how they haven't been able to hug or give them, um, uh, have meals with them, how they haven't been able to go outside even since March. And, um, how their diseases may be progressing and how they might have dementia, don't remember their loved ones at all, which has been terrifying and has been so sad and really has been taking a toll on their caregivers. Like, um, I know it has been really taking a toll on my mental health as well. Um, having this week, I've been doing a lot of long shifts and there have been many shifts where I've come out with just really heavy heavy burdens um, because of how really stressful it was because of um, having been in there for 12, 16 hours, just with how stressful it was. Um, we also wanna keep in mind how awkward and how stressful that gatherings really can be if you do have them. Um, it can be awkward just to tell people that you might actually have symptoms or how awkward it can be if you say you might even have sniffles or if you have allergies. Um, it can be awkward to say, hey, I have a tickle in my throat. I have to cough. Um, you've all had that awkward cough in the grocery store sometime, maybe, where you have a fuzzy or something in the back of your throat. And you don't know what to do. Um, we've all had that quick, um, we've all had that quick sneeze even and people stare at you we're not quite sure what to do you know we just have an allergy or some kind of thing stuck in there and we're not quite sure what's happening but we know we don't have covid um people don't know around us but um it's that awkward situation um and we feel lonely as well it's that again that depression that might be happening um maybe not that full onset of depression but maybe like a small um like a small instance of that occurring um, things that might be impacting depressive states would be the loss of things that would be your happiness zones, such as, um, the gym, going to the store and de-stressors. So I know for 
instance, if people have lost loved ones, um, places that they would go to de-stress, like for instance, going shopping, or if they like going to um, the gym to help them de-stress, if they can't go there now, then they're stuck in their homes. They're stuck in places that might remind them of loved ones they've lost. They're stuck in there and they are forced to be by themselves, which is going to force them to be um, alone. It's going to force them to um, maybe relive things they don't want to relive. So it's going to force them into more depressive things. Um, so making sure that you're reaching out to loved ones who might be more prone to depressive acts, maybe more, dep um, more prone to um, depressive states. Um, so maybe ways to help during COVID, um, going on hikes, exercising outside, going for walks with dogs, with relatives that you're living with right now, roommates, reading books, um, Pinteresting, looking up new recipes or activities to try, Zooming with friends and relatives, um, picking up a new craft, trying not to buy too many things from Amazon Prime. I can be guilty from that, but trying not to get too many new things on there. Online shopping can be pretty bad, but trying not to do too much of that. Um, making sure you're trying lots of self-care, making sure that you're trying to um, watch out for your mental health. It is very important that you're keeping track of yourself and you're keeping in touch with how you yourself are doing. Um, there is a self-assessment that we have here. Um, this is a link that you could type in yourself. We do later on um, in the next slide have an actual PDF that is an assessment tool that they use that you can try at home that I will go on and show you all. That could be used um, afterwards if you'd like. Um, but some common questions that they would ask you, and that's also used in the self-assessment, um, include um, if you have little interest or little pleasure in doing things, it would include asking about your appetite, about um, your thoughts of harming yourself or um, your opinion of being alive or dead your um, ability to concentrate or your opinion of yourself, your energy, um, how you're sleeping, any of those things. So that's all in this link right here. If you would like to take a picture of that or anything. And then here's this Bex depression inventory. I'd never heard of this before until I had done some research on this and it's pretty cool. So this has a 96% accuracy rate and I'll pull this up. So this guy, um, Beck, um, let me see. He created this tool and I guess I had closed out of it. Um, he created this tool to help with um, classifying the um, severity of depression. So people, patients um, would fill this out and they would circle these numbers and then you would add up all of the numbers and then that would help to classify or help to indicate um, maybe where to go in terms of helping to diagnose the level of severity for depression. It wouldn't be a total diagnostic tool, but it would help to guide maybe a um, psychiatrist or a counseling um, professional where, where they should be going and where should they be looking in terms of depression. So this is a great tool to be looking for. Like I said, 86% accuracy rate. Um, and then signs and symptoms. So feeling sad or empty, thoughts of death or suicide, aches and pains. Not only is this uh, mental, but it's also physical as well. Um, overeating and weight gain, lack of appetite, poor me memory, concentration, and decision-making, insomnia or lack of sleep, fatigue and lack of energy, anger and irritability, pleasure no pleasure in activity, feeling excessive guilty, um, feeling worthless, feeling hopelessness or helplessness.
Okay. So hi, my name is Pam, and I'll be taking over from here to finish up the PowerPoint. So to start, um, I found this picture that I really like. It is showing the difference between the perception and the reality of depression. Um, I like this because I feel it speaks very loudly in the sense that depression is so much more than people tend to think. Um, an average person who maybe hasn't experienced any sort of mental disorder or who has never dug deeper into understanding depression may stereotypically assume that um, depression can be defined as just being lazy or a feeling of simple sadness. But in reality, this isn't the case at all. So anyone who has ever experienced about a depression, even just a slight one, will be able to attest that um, they have experienced most or all of these of the below manifestations. Um, it is much more severe than basic. It obviously goes off of, you know, the causes and the types, but it, it's, it's not, it's, there's no pinpoint definition. Everybody can have many different manifestations and experience many different things. So moving on, um, here we are talking about um, how to prevent depression because ultimately the best treatment is prevention. And here are just some general health and wellness tips that everybody should be participating in, but um, they might help to aid in preventing or avoiding an episode of depression. So we have trying your best at stress management and avoiding triggers. This can be monumental and incredibly difficult task. I understand it's so much easier said than done, but always remember to try your best. Um, take care of yourself. Take time and prioritize your self-care always. Um, develop the confidence to say, I can and I will overcome this. Always um, never be ashamed of depression. Um, understanding that this is a problem is always the first step and always the hardest step typically. So try to avoid being alone for any lengths of time. Surround yourself with even friends or family. It doesn't always have to be a therapist or a psychiatrist, just somebody there that you can get support from and talk to about your symptoms. Um, and then more holistic things we have. Getting some adequate sunshine is incredibly important for your health um, and preventing that seasonal depression. Eat healthy, drink enough water, exercise, and most importantly, always, like I had said, identify that there is a problem and get help before an event begins to progress and get um, increasingly worse. Okay, and then treatment after it has been pinpointed and identified. So uh, this is pretty basic and this might be slightly repetitive as we have gone over it a little bit before, but we will officially address it to solidify. Um, also, take this slide with a grain of salt because it is important to understand that everybody's treatment is very individual, individualized and tailored appropriately depending on their situation and the causes of their depression. So anyways, there are two main approaches to treatment which include natural methods and medical, medical management. Natural treatments include the elimination of stress to the best of one's ability, having a routine with goals to add a sense of accomplishment, as well as being able to avoid hopelessness. Um, having a routine with goals, um, healthy diet and drinking plenty of water are always good ways, um, of holistic wellness, getting enough sleep, having, as well as, um, working on your mental health aspects, uh, like, um, challenging negative thoughts, um, in addition to, having fun through finding new hobbies, trying to distract your brain from ever going down in those dark holes um, and avoiding medications if all possible. But um, worst comes to worst, there are always medical management if none of these treatments are working. So medical management would include cognitive and behavioral therapies, interpersonal therapies, and antidepressant medications. This always um, follows meeting with your physician and finding the best treatment that there is for you. And so lastly, we have the most important part of depression treatment is getting help from the start, understanding that there is a problem, never be ashamed from 
and help can be from whoever you can find and whoever you are comfortable with. Please get help as soon as possible and as soon as you notice that there is something going on um, for the most optimal treatment and the quickest recovery or maintenance of this disease. The most, um, if you or a loved one is experiencing even mild to moderate depression, please seek counseling or help as soon as possible. As mentioned earlier, interventions, um, early interventions allow for um, us to be much more capable of preventing the progression. Um, if you or a loved one are experiencing severe depression or having a se severe depressive episode, please do not hesitate to speak like medical attention because I personally know from many other healthcare workers who have um, would love to hand lend a helping hand to any of those who have been feeling um, a severe depressive episode. Also, um, we have some provided some hotlines here to call that are free 24 seven confidential assistance um, for more educated or education or immediate help with su suicide preventions or any other medical assistance. The National Suicide Prevention Hotline especially stands out because there is a large array of languages to choose from. So this one is can be used um, globally. Um, but, and they also have the ability to text or chat and receive 24 hour assistance um, for any time of need. And then in conclusion, these are the important takeaways we had from our presentation today. Um, prevention is always a, the key to living a healthy lifestyle, always understanding when it's starting and nipping it in the bud as fast as possible. Um, always identifying that there is a problem. Don't ever be ashamed. Um, I know from other healthcare professors, um, professionals, nobody's going to judge you. We all just want to be there to help you and reverse the statistics as much as we can, because it is becoming such a prevalent disease. Um, reach out wherever, reach out for help, whether that's just a friend or like a trained medical professional. And lastly, depression is so much more than what it seems. A loved one who is depressed is experienced so much more than just sadness or being lazy, as we mentioned before. So always try to remember to be empathetic and sympathize with those of your loved ones or friends who have been experiencing any kind of depression. So this concludes our PowerPoint and here are the resources we have collected. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.